Hi guys, this video is going to be on cutting calories. I'm basically going to go over the process of working out a calorie deficit based off energy levels and how to basically go into a cutting phase, what to do and what not to do. Now the process of working out your calories is very similar to the bulking macros video I did. It's the same calculations just without the range because you're not going to be working up, you're going to be working down. Right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is 22 calories times your body weight in kilos or in pounds times 10. Now I'm 84 kilos so I'm going to do this off me, the amount of activity I do. So 84 times 22 is 1,848. Now this is my maintenance calories doing nothing, so just sat around all day. That's how many calories I need to eat to maintain weight. Now here we have an activity level chart. And this ranges from 1.3 to 2.2. And this chart, this activity level is based off training as well. So training three to six times a week in the gym and obviously energy output. And what I mean, what I mean by that is steps. So 1.3 to 1.6, we got three to 5K. Uh, here we have five to 7K, seven to 10K and 10K plus. Every day I'm aiming for 10K steps. So I'm gonna go for 1.7. So I'm going to do my maintenance calories times 1.7 is 3,141. Now this is how many calories I'd have to eat whilst training and doing my steps every day to maintain weight. So what I'm going to do now is put myself into a deficit. And you want to do this two to 300 calories. I won't go any higher than 300, especially if you're a beginner, just because it's just not, it won't be fun at all, you'll be starving. But obviously I'm used to dieting now, so I'm going to go 300. And that leaves me at 2,841. So that would be my starting point going into a deficit. Now what you want to do with that amount of calories is break it down into uh, proteins, fats and carbs. Now protein, 2 gram per kg. And there's 4 calories per gram of protein. Fat, 1 gram of lean body weight. So just 1 gram of lean muscle. And there's 9 calories per gram. And what you want to do with fat, you need to know your body fat. So you could do this with a DEXA scan, one of those BMI scales where you hold the thing out in front of you. Or you can use the calipers. But you need to have know a rough average of where your body fat's at. And when you have that, you divide it by your weight. So say you're 20% body fat, you weigh 90 kilos. You divide the 20 by 90 and then take that number away from your weight. And that will give you the amount of grams of fat you need to eat. And there's 9 calories per gram of fat. Now to work out your carbs, you want to add the calories from your protein and fat. Take it away from your deficit. So the, the number that we got after taking away two to 300 calories, depending on, how, uh, what, depending on what number you want to go for. And then you want to divide that by 4 because there's 4 calories per 1 gram of carbs. Now, once you've done that, you're going to have your proteins, fats, and carbs for your deficit. Now, what you want to do to make sure everything else is spot on and you're actually making progress is you want to stay consistent with everything. And one of the most important things you need to do is constantly track your steps. Now, if you're someone who's stuck inside all day and you're doing less steps, your food is going to be lower because you're not getting the energy output you need. If you're doing 10K steps, your food can be higher to, because from those calories you're still going to be getting into a deficit. So potentially it, I find it easier to do more exercise and that will allow your food to be higher, you're not going to get as hungry and you're not going to struggle as much. And now a lot of people have been messaging me about how to go about a diet and how to get started in one and really it's very simple. Go for food you like, obviously when I say like I don't mean, I don't mean unhealthy foods, you want clean foods. You want to stay away from saturated fats, uh, well high, stuff in high in saturated fat because obviously saturated fats is meat products. So when it comes to meat, go for your lean stuff. Non-saturates, fine, make up most of your fats out of that. And carbs, go for the best carb sources you can really. There's, it's kind of hard to go wrong with carbs as long as it's not overdone in fats and sugar. And when you're when you come to working, when you come to adding up your fats through food, 20, 
30% of your calorie intake is supposed to be from fats and you want to make 26% of that through, sat uh, through non-saturated fats and 4% through saturated fat. And you want to stay away from trans fats as much as you possibly can. So then once you've done your activity levels, you've got a goal for your steps, you've sorted out all your macros, you've added up your food, you know what you're going to be eating daily. Now in the first week or two, you'd see a big drop in weight, it could be anywhere up to five pounds. Now this isn't going to stay, it's not going to stay like this and that isn't a uh, fat loss. That's purely just water weight and obviously loss in glycogen because of the reduced amount of carbs you're eating. And over time then your weight is going to begin to stabilise and that's when you need to look at stuff and think right, is it time to obviously up activity or pull away from carbs? Uh, your fat will tend to stay the same throughout a deficit just because you're not going to be adding any lean muscle on. Maybe a little but it's unrealistic in a deficit, especially the DP you get. The main goal is obviously to preserve the muscle mass you have. So when you start pulling away carbs, you can really do this at whatever rate, at whatever rate you want. Now, there's going to be two scenarios really to a deficit. You're either going to be an individual that has excess body fat, isn't really too focused on maintaining muscle, or you're going to have someone who's training quite often and is focused on maintaining muscle and dropping the fat. Now, someone who's someone who is trying to maintain muscle. We'll definitely go about this slower. I wouldn't suggest losing any more than two pound a week at most, because you are going to start eating to muscle mass if you push it, if you push uh, the deficit too far. But if you're someone who isn't too bothered about that and you're purely just trying to get rid of the excess fat, you can obviously push push your diet harder a bit quicker. Obviously, if you can adhere to it and you can stick to it, that's perfectly fine. Just go with what you can do. Now also, a lot of people struggle with staying consistent with the diet and what I mean by this is they're constantly looking for changes. Now, if you're losing every week, say, say you are trying to preserve muscle and you're losing a pound and a half a week and you're doing minimum cardio, your steps are about 10k, there's no need to change anything until your weight stabilises and this cardio activity levels and food isn't doing anything then you need to drop stuff but there's no point changing what isn't broken because all you're going to do in the long run is make stuff harder for yourself so you need to constantly stay consistent with everything and just trust the process and obviously if you are someone that's heavy into a diet at this point you're going to want to space meals out as much as you possibly can uh, I definitely try spreading things out between five to six, four actually four to six meals a day. I I tend to go five to six just so you're not as hungry throughout the day. Spread your carbs out as evenly as you can because you really don't want to eat your carbs early in the morning and then towards the end of the night you are going to be starving. Uh, a couple tips for people in diets have go for high protein. Uh, foods such as like natural yogurt, fat free yogurt, no fat, basically no carbs, high in protein and it's obviously filling and extra protein doesn't necessarily lead to uh, extra fat gain. So you can obviously as you drop carbs up your protein and there are studies to back this up. I can't say off the top of my head who's who the buy but there was a couple studies that people who ate more protein in deficits actually saw an increase in muscle mass and a decrease in fat loss purely because how your body disposes of the excess protein. So that's a good way of obviously feeding if you are hungry in a deficit. Definitely go for a protein source such as egg white, something that will fill you up and obviously isn't going to lead to that ex excess fat. Also, don't be too strict at all. Obviously, there's, there's going to be an element of strictness to it because you are dieting, but there's no need to go over the top. And what I mean by this is cutting out sauces, seasonings. Obviously, don't go too over the top. Like I still have jam on my bagels. Obviously, jam relatively high in sugar, but 
when everything when you've ticked all the other boxes such as activity levels your training sleeping everything everything else is good things like that won't make the biggest impact obviously if you're going into like a contest prep eventually stuff like that's going to have to go but if you're someone who just wants a steady diet and is taking the time with stuff you can obviously you can't afford to put stuff in there because it isn't going to give you the biggest impact in a negative way uh and that's it yeah they're basically the go-to things you want to do for a diet people who are looking to lose weight and are struggling to go about it stick to those things stay consistent don't be too strict on yourself take it slowly the harder you go if you're going too hard straight away you're going to hate it and you just that you want to enjoy the process basically you want to enjoy seeing the results you want to enjoy eating the food and you don't want to hate it otherwise you're just not going to get anywhere and in the long run it's not going to be good for your mental health at all so yeah that is basically my go-to on diet phases how to go about a diet phase how to structure it hope you enjoyed the video see you in a bit